I really don't know much of what's Go going ahead, on. Go ahead, say say whatever but, you want. Uh, I don't know. I'm just yeah. Welcome back to another good good podcast. This is episode three. Um, today we're featuring. I guess I'm featuring. Uh, the one and only Bryson DeChambeau. Thanks for coming on the pod. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This is going to be a lot of fun. It. Yeah, this is going to be good. Interesting topics. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of good stuff to go over, guys. Um, this podcast is going to be a little different than what you've seen uh, on the last two podcasts. This is going to be very personal. Bryson and I are just going to talk. I'm going to interview him, learn a lot about his past, present, and future. Um, yeah, thanks for coming on, dog. Yeah, I'm excited, Appreciate man. It. I think there's a lot of interesting talking points that we can get across and um yeah they're they're obviously in the golf world it's a little messed up right now it's a little crazy it's a little crazy but i think before we get into that before we get into the spicy topics and probably what everybody wants to know sure or at least a lot of you guys probably want to know um i'm more interested in this is also maybe like a little bit just for me but i want to get back into the beginning days you know how did you get into the game of golf how old were you what got you into the game kind of yeah, well, my dad got me in, into the game, uh, John DeChambeau. He uh, played a lot of golf. He was a great uh, amateur for a long time, won a bunch of city championships. He also was a professional, played in the Phoenix Open one year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he had he qualified for a tour event, mm. which was kind of cool, but really never cool. really did much in it and uh, had a bunch of different jobs. And um, I started grabbing a golf club when I was as young as I could start walking pretty much, and I started swinging left-handed much very similar to what Tiger Woods uh, did with his dad. Um, Tiger swung left-handed at first. I don't know if anybody knew that, but he swung left-handed mirroring his father because he right. would look from face on and it would look like it was left-handed to I him. did hear about that. Yeah, and yeah. so he would swing left-handed. That's the same thing I did. I grew up swinging it left-handed initially okay. for like the first couple of days. And then my dad turned me around and uh, I started hitting it right hand, and I just right. became better with right hand. Over and that's the why, time. You, I mean, because I've seen you swing a couple left. You yeah. can still do it. Huh? I'm, I'm ambidextrous, so I can I can do things from both sides. What of do my you body. think you could shoot lefty? That's uh, maybe a video coming <laughs> out. Uh, Wait, actually, do you film yeah, one? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, we haven't filmed it, but we are going to uh, we're, we're going to film it at some point. Yeah. That's so, be but sick. I I think I could shoot left handed. I probably could break forty if I gave it a good for nine holes. I'm just saying nine holes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I could probably That's, break 40. I played nine holes left-handed when I was like 18, uh, just before I went to college, and I shot 46, I think. Wow. Yeah, and so if I practice a little bit and, and you know, got putting down and chipping down a little bit, bunkering, right. I think I could break 40 pretty That's pretty impressive. easily. If I just practice for a couple of weeks left-handed. Yeah, I played once, and I think I was like... I want to say I was maybe 20 over in six holes. So <laughs> it's I, not easy. I can't relate. Um, I can't relate one it's bit. Okay. Easy. So got into golf basically since you started walking. Yes. Um, and then fast forward, when did you get into, I guess, the competitive side of it? Well, when I was or nine. Golf and stuff? Yeah. When I was, so I played a bunch of sports growing up. I did soccer, basketball, baseball, mm. anything you think of, I did. I ran, um, loved volleyball. And when I was about nine, my dad entered me this uh, Visalia Junior Tournament in California. It's like 35, 40 minutes from Fresno. Mm -hmm. And I went and played, and there's this guy, I believe his name was RJ Magat, and he was the just come-up kid, he can't-miss kid. And my first tournament ever, (laughs) playing from the Reds, and there's some abbreviated tees and whatnot, right? And played nine holes. And this guy was supposed to win. He'd won in the past two years when he was six Mm -hmm. and seven, one of those things. Yeah. and Or seven and eight, whatever it was. So we were both nine, and uh, I go out there, and I'm super nervous. I don't know what to expect. I'm like, okay, sure, I'm just going to play in this tournament. I don't know what this is about, but right. sure, I'm just going to play nine holes. And finish the, the round, and I shoot, we shoot even par, mm-hmm. both of us. The guy I thought he would won and came in, and he was like, you know, everybody was around him, like congratulating him, and then I come in, and I shoot 36, and everybody was like, what? Everyone was shocked because he always they were wins, like, huh? Yeah, he won, he, he won everything in that area. Yeah. He played a bunch of tournaments, and he was that can't-miss kid. And I shot even par. I didn't know what to expect. I was like, okay, whatever. And uh, the guys all called me out for cheating. They were saying I was cheating. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, because no there's just this, who's this kid? Came out of nowhere, right? Was so, like everybody else in the field, were they even close to even par? Or no, what, no, no, that, no, no, no. So it was like why. 42, 41 was the next. Yeah, that's why they all thought like, there's no way this kid had to cheat it and whatnot. That's so frustrating. It, it's crazy. It's crazy. So when we actually went into a playoff, and that was the first time I experienced nerves. Really? <laughs> yeah. So I wasn't nervous the whole day. I just played. My dad was helping me. And uh, then I get to the, the playoff, and I'm like, 
oh my gosh, this is, this, yeah. is, this is what it feels like. This is actually what it's about. Right. And so my dad had told me about all the time, like, you're going to be nervous. Like, it's going to happen. And like on the first day, I was like, okay, a little nervous. I just went and hit and played. I was like, I'm not expecting anything. Mm -hmm. And I should even par and uh, get into a playoff, right? First hole, uh, <laughs> I'll never forget. I was up on the tee box and everybody's watching. And that was the first time I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to actually like, hit a good shot. Yeah. And so I do. And the other kid hits a good shot up there. He misses a shot off to the right. I think he chips it on. And, um, I hit my shot up on the green. I have like 25 feet or whatever. And uh, he two putts for bogey. And now I've got a two putt to, to win. And I hit it up there close and I make it. And I win yeah. in the first playoff hole. And that was like the first moment I, was, I, I realized what golf was about, what competition was about. And it kind of got my juices flowing, which is really cool. Um, vivid memory from that day and winning yeah. and I remember this willow tree. It was at Visalia Country Club. It was this willow tree that I passed by um, holding this trophy. It was just one of those memories that just stuck in you forever. So anyway, I remember that, and it was like a sense of accomplishment. My dad was so proud of me, and right. I wanted to continue to make my dad proud in that regard, and my, my mom proud. And So that's kind of what got my juices going. So I your won. dad was pretty much your golf mentor coach growing he, up, pretty he, much? Yes, he was until I was like 10, oh, the next year and a half. I couldn't take it from my dad anymore. I love right. my dad, but it's like I couldn't learn from him. Yeah. It's one of those father-son moments that, you know, that my, my father was smart enough to go, you know what? I'm not going to be able to effectively communicate this to my child of what I want him to accomplish, so I need to put this in the hands of somebody else that he will listen to and respects. Yeah. I respected my dad, but it was it's a different level. Like uh, I see all the time my brother uh, – uh, I'm not going to put my brother on the spot, but, but you know, my, my nephew and my brother, it's tough sometimes to, to communicate for whatever reason. It's just the father son duo that they have. And I can sometimes come in there and get the message across a little differently um, where, you know, Gavin can understand it just a, a fraction differently. It's just a different perspective. Right. And if two people right. are saying the same thing, then all of a sudden you start listening a little bit better. Um, yeah. But that initial thought with, with kids when they're starting to grow up is they just want to fight and combat. And so that's kind of what it was. And so I went to Mike Shy right after that. It was my whole point. Yeah. That, and uh, learned it's, from him. It's interesting you say that because for me, I guess coming from a different perspective, um, I remember my dad and I had a conversation when I started doing YouTube a lot. Mm -hmm. And it was similar to the point. I was like, okay, we need to either choose to have a business relationship or a personal relationship. Right. Which with your dad, you want to be in a loving personal right. relationship. And it's also one of those things if he's coaching you, 24-7, yep. there's definitely going to be some disagreements, yeah. and it's, you know, you might as well avoid that. Yeah. Unless it's like Tiger's father and how he um, took care of uh, Tiger, like Earl took care of him, and um, it, it's just different. I don't, I don't know. There's, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I've seen right. a lot not work, um, but and most of the time it doesn't work. The father-son relationship just does not do well if, if it's in a business relationship. Yeah. It's too difficult to do both. So... so so nine years old, that's when you started junior golf. Now nine until whatever it would be, until you go to college, did you play and say like AJGAs and stuff like that? Or what was your junior golf career like? We didn't really have the funds to travel across the country, okay. um, play AJGA events. I played in one AJGA event. It was like a three-hour drive. And it was like, you know, three, $4,000, whatever it was back mm -hmm. then. They were expensive. To, crazy. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Three, four, wait, to, to enter or just travel? You had to play. To, really? to play. Yeah, Actually? that's what AJJs costed back in the day. It was at least no from what way. I remember, yeah. Wow. It was expensive. Yeah. It was like with, with travel like costs and food and everything. It, it equated yeah, to probably about yeah, 3000 right. um, for the for trip. Sure. And it was like three or four days and hotel, 400 bucks, 1200 bucks and food. The entry, which is a 1500 or something like It was $3,000 to do a tournament. Right. Um we didn't really have those funds right. growing up, and but I played a lot of JGA and C, Junior Golf in Northern California mm -hmm. events, and I won a lot of those events. The NCGA Junior Tour, which was just starting to come about at that point in time, there's two competing Junior Tour Junior Tours, but they, they both served a purpose, and yeah. um, I won a lot of events in both of them. I still have all the trophies and the memorabilia awesome. from that, which is cool. Uh, moving off of that, I remember one summer, uh, this is not a story that many people know, but we didn't have the funds to go play junior golf right. that summer. My parents is right during 2008, okay. um, right before that, just right, right before that was, was my junior year. And my parents were like, we just, we don't have anything. Like we yeah. don't have any money. Wow. And I was like, all right, well, how am I going to do this? And so I asked my coach and we were like, well, look, you know, you want to go play in the U.S. Amateur. You want to go uh, play in the J uh, junior worlds. You want to go do all these, these trips. It's going to cost you X amount. 
I started learning how to budget a little bit. Uh, my mom helped me out a lot uh, with learning, hey, this is what it's going to cost. This is what everything, all the line items, this is the full you know budget that we have yeah. for it. And this is what it's going to cost. And so we made a plan. This is how much it was. And I said, okay, mom, I'll go raise it. Right. She's like, what? I was like, yeah, wow. I'll go raise it. I'll just go door to door and ask. And That's so I literally crazy. went door to door around my neighborhood and ask everybody for, hey, can you support me? This is my junior golf schedule. I'm an up and coming junior. I want to play. Well, I'm uh, a prospect to go to SMU. Like I, I want to go to Stanford, UCLA, SMU, one of those things. Right. Gave the whole spiel on it. I had to sell myself and uh, got to a place where I accumulated a couple thousand dollars. And then there's this one guy. No way. Uh, yeah, one guy. Uh, that gave Dude, me like I'm actually getting chills bucks. right now, like hearing this, because I've never heard you say this. I don't like, talk I, about it much. I, don't I know, like but talking just, about it. It's crazy to think that like you're where you're at now today, and yeah. you went through that. Yeah, and, and struggle. It, it, it's um, and I talk about. I, I think it's okay for me to talk about it now. I like talking about it because I finally want people to realize where I came from in a in a sense. Yeah. I'm starting to unveil a little bit of that as my personality is starting to get out on YouTube a lot more. I really want people to understand who I am, where I came from, and, and mm-hmm. how I dealt with things growing up. Uh, there was a lot of resistance growing up, as right. you can imagine, from golf coaches to uh, high school golf coaches, junior high school golf coaches. Uh, anyone and everyone just thought I was going down the wrong road. But to finish up the, the story, I accumulated $2,000. Uh, it was about that amount, and we were able to travel and go to a couple places, bought airfare tickets, the whole thing with that. Um, got to Junior World, finished second behind Bo Hostler, and SMU gave me a full ride that next day. Damn. And that's just kind of like how it happened. Wow. Yeah, it was a crazy whole thing. And again, it was coming from my parents, you know, made a good amount of money. My mom made close to ninety ninety thousand dollars a year, but right. with my dad's medical bills and everything, we netted out to, you know, pretty much zero wow. at the end of it. You know, she had a savings account, but it was like three or four thousand and like that was it. We wow. didn't have anything after that. And I'm like, I'm not gonna go into your account to do that. Like that's not right. Dude. Um, it was crazy. Yeah. Growing up, but it, again, we were okay, but it was always living on the edge, like eating bologna sandwiches and all well, that. Fun and stuff. I think that's, that's really cool that you went through that. Cause now you have the perspective, yeah, you know, it's all now, perspective. You, now, you know, it's like, this is where you're at today. And I think people will start to understand a little bit of why I made some of the live decision right. uh, that I did. You know, that live decision was huge and we'll get into that, but yeah, now well, you can kind of get a little twin, you know, a little, yeah, little, look little sneak into, peek ahead of it. Exactly. Yeah. We'll definitely get into exactly. that. Um, okay, so finish up junior, going to yeah. college. Did you play all four years at SMU? So I played three and a quarter. Went to SMU, thought I was going to graduate, was a physics major, math minor, economics minor. Mm-hmm. Actually finished the economics minor and the math minor. But the physics degree, I had like two more classes. It was a thermodynamics lab and a quantum lab. Okay. Those two. And they were a lot. It was going to take a lot for me. Uh, to finish those off. It was going to be like another six months. And then I had oh, some wow. general education, some normal GE stuff I had to finish. Mm-hmm. But that junior year, I won the NCAAs and the U.S. Amateur uh, in, in that same year, 2015. Yeah. And I got offered to play in Australia, Dubai, and some European tour events. And uh, before 2016 Masters, obviously, I was going to go play that. And I said, what, am I going to focus on school and try and finish out school while trying to prepare for the masters yeah and am i gonna give myself those hard yeah, classes am i gonna give myself the best shot yeah to do as good as i can in the masters and I always said, go I, back. exactly and so i asked all my teachers i asked um my athletic director i asked everybody and i said is this all right and they go yeah what are yeah. you talking about go yeah like why not you're we're always we're always here we'll honor that uh full ride right i said that's awesome so now i know i had a guarantee to go back Respect no matter what them. if it didn't Respect. if it didn't work out yeah, massive respect, and I've and I've donated a, a, a decent amount to SMU to the SMU golf team and the physics department. Good. I did that last year, so you know it's going to take some time as well. But that's that's been a lot of fun giving back to a place where I didn't even graduate. But yeah, they were nice enough to extend me a full ride and a, and a great education. Right. So very Absolutely. honored to have that. So okay, was that like your aha moment? Did you have an aha moment? Did you have a time in your golf career? Well, I'll, actually, let's go back to here. Mm-hmm. So junior golf, you obviously knew you were a really good player. Yeah. Was there at any point or when did you say, okay, Man, I want to go pro. Like, I want to pursue this. This is where Man, I want to be. It's a very I... intimate moment, not one that many can understand, but I felt called. There was a moment where I was playing ping pong with a buddy of mine, JT Smart, uh, at his house, and vividly remember playing ping pong with him. Love ping pong. 
pretty decent. At it. uh, <laughs> Insane, it's by the way, guys. Literally, <laughs> I've played him maybe twenty times. I've lost twenty times. <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of my side passion projects. Right. Um, as well as pool starting to become fun and chess is starting to become fun for me. But Wait, you've been playing chess? Yes, I love Dude, chess. Dude, I haven't played in a while, but I got <laughs> addicted for like six months straight. Yeah. It's it's a crazy addiction. It's a whole other mind game that you oh gotta play. With a, if, you, if you're going against someone that's really good and you're trying to see what they're trying to accomplish. Are you more of a fast or a slow player? I'm, like a, fast I'm a slower slow? player in that regard because okay. it takes me a bit to think. Um, if, I'm, if I'm just speed playing, like I can try to get around some it's not as easy for me i i, I like planning it out yeah you know? no i, I respect yeah, that that's kind of my that. thing um where were we i totally uh forgot. back to aha moment pro golf yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so when i was junior vividly remember playing ping pong with jt smart at his house and i just felt like i was called it was weird i don't know how to explain it i got chills it's a full deal right and i just felt like i was called to do something crazy in the game of golf I just heard this voice. It was like, this is, you're, you're going to do something crazy. Right. I was like, what? And I just got complete chills. I don't know how else to explain it, but I felt called. Yeah. By some it's, other worldly experience. Yeah. From my ver- view of it, it, it would be God. God right. called me to do this. It was, it was weird. It was just weird. People, some people are called to go on mission trips in different areas, and I was called to do that. Yeah. And so golf became a high-focused uh, dedicated thing of my life. It after wasn't that, school. After, after that, that moment, moment, yeah, I still loved golf. I was playing other sports, played volleyball, loved volleyball, loved basketball, loved really? baseball. But at that moment, I, it just a, a light switched. Do you remember how old you were when that happened? And man, it was like fourteen or fifteen, something in that time frame. Yeah. And playing a bunch of sports, then loved golf. I was the best at golf. I knew yeah. it, but um, it was this weird moment. Ever since then, I start. I went down the physics route of golf, trying to figure out anything and everything I could do to have a distinct advantage in the this, 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 absolute distinct advantage in the game of golf. Were you so? Okay, well, that's a. I guess that basically answers my question. But when did you get into that side of things? Yep. Was it when you were fourteen, fifteen? That's when it was. Because and now, did you? When did you start using the one length irons? Do you still do that, by the way? <laughs> yeah, you still do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. When did you start doing that? Because I remember so, that was just such a massive thing. Yeah, two thousand eleven. You were there. Yeah, two thousand eleven. So my junior year, which was about when I was seventeen. Uh huh. I was seventeen. Think about it. I'm a junior getting offers from UCLA, Stanford, Oregon, and you're uh, about to switch Texas. everything up. <laughs> and that summer I switched everything up in my whole entire golf game. Really? I go, "No, this is what I need to do." Again, it was one of those moments where I, I felt called. called. I just felt called. I, yeah. I figured it out at Mike Shy's tent and I go, "Why isn't everybody doing this?" Cuz I, I tested. I'm like, I was like, "Okay, let's build a wedge, build a 3 iron, uh, build a 7 iron, just do three clubs." And I built them. Um, I, we built the whole set. Did you have the thick grips at that time or no? Uh-huh. Okay. So I put the thick grips on about three weeks before that. <laughs> really? <laughs> so it's like everything switched. Wow. And my putting was switching at that point. It was crazy. These coaches thought I was nuts, which, you know, in fair honesty, right. I was obviously going against the grain. Yeah, um, a lot. I mean, no one's yeah, ever done that before. Yeah, I just full switched everything. But I wasn't afraid to take risks. And I think that's one of the most important things. If there's a quality you have where you you like taking risks, don't don't think that's a bad thing at all. Yeah. Use it to your advantage and try and find little holes that you can they can put yourself in in a positive way to to gain an advantage in a situation, whatever that is. Uh, the people that are that are kind of mid level, um, I guess you could say, just walking walking the line, you know, behind somebody, mm-hmm. uh, they're never gonna gonna pave the way for future improvement. And, and my my thought process is if if you have that knack to want to learn or understand things go down the road go for, i mean you you paving the way for youtube content and golf like you obviously felt called to do something you, yeah. you wanted to do it there was a reason there's motivations behind it and absolutely you know you got to go out of, outside of the, the box and you got to be strategic with it so going back to that real quick 2011 i build a set hit my pitching wedge eight iron five iron four iron and they went the proper distance we built them and i'm like why is nobody doing this yeah. and i said i'm just gonna do it so I did it. The first tournament I went out and played with, I won with, and I was like, "Okay, this is good." good. <laughs> All your full ride scholarships, they're <laughs> and, happy well, still. But, but, the, but then I, well, that. But also, I went there and I showed them some of the stuff I was doing, and they're like, "This guy's too much." Actually, <laughs> yes. did some colleges like straight yeah, up UC, take UCLA the offer and away? Stanford, Derek Freeman. I'll never forget. No way, Derek Freeman. Yeah, because they heard I was I was trying to get into Stanford, and what? Stanford guys are, was here, and then I was trying to get into UCLA. 
vice versa. And they thought I was also, you they know. They pulled out. Yeah, they dropped their offers. So now we're going to move on at this point in time. And SMU, Oregon, Nevada, San Jose State, uh, Fresno State, obviously. Right. Um, and then a few others along the East Coast. But SMU was really the, the only one that, this Josh Gregory came out and watched me at Junior Worlds when I was a junior, and he was like, yeah, I'm going to offer you a full ride. I love that. Wait, so do you grow up in Dallas? You grew no, up I grew up in Fresno, California. Clovis. I knew that. You're right. Close. I knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Close, close. <laughs> yeah. How long did you live there? Until uh, I left for college. Really? Why Why asked me? Like, why did you want it? Was it just because the coach wanted you the so bad? The coach literally and came saying, down and watched me play the last round of Junior World. Saw me shoot 33 on the back nine, made like three birdies in the last four holes. Yeah. And called me as I was leaving to go back up. Finished second, little ceremony. I'm coming out of Torrey Pines, because that's where it's, pl- it's played. We're going around the, the roundabout, and I get a call from a random number. Mm-hmm. And I answer it, and he goes, hey, Bryson, this is uh, Josh Gregory from SMU. How you doing? And I'm like, coach, I'm, I'm great. Thank you. Uh, why are you calling me? Like, well, I just wanted to extend you a, a full ride offer to SMU right there. and I'm like what <laughs> You're and I got chills I got chills from my whole yeah. body it was sick oh that's crazy uh, so I was driving I'm like oh my gosh thank you I appreciate it he said don't make a decision now but it's just there just know you have you're that. like yeah I'm, and I'm like literally I wanted <laughs> to say tell- yes oh you didn't <laughs> I didn't know. even know what the school you played, looked you like you played it cool <laughs> I, didn't, I tried to play it cool my mom yeah. was like freaking out don't say anything don't say anything <laughs> <laughs> you're probably just like, like I'm all in. All right, all right, never all right, been cool. there never visited but I'm down but what's funny SMU is a good school I literally looked up SMU on my phone after that and I saw what it was about everything I saw the pony the Peruna and saw how good of a school it was how beautiful the campus was mm-hmm. I like Texas I'd been there before when I was 12 I played in some some cup that we went to Texas for and it was a team event it was fun team event by the yeah. way uh, <laughs> right. Right, right right it was fun Slipped down and, there. right and uh <laughs> Yeah, that's sorry. <laughs> but I, you love Texas. I love Texas, yeah. yeah. And um, later that week, I actually verbally committed to SMU without even seeing the campus or anything. That's crazy. Yeah. And it worked yeah. out. It did. So three and a half years or however long you were there, and you you drop, you don't finish all four. Talk to me about the process of getting into professional golf and what that mm, was like. Man. Well, it's a bit of throw yourself in the fire and learn how to deal with it. Mm-hmm. You, there's no way to prepare for it fully. You can play the best golf of your junior career, the best golf of your amateur career. You ultimately got to be put in the fire, get in tournaments and play and fail a mm-hmm. lot. Um, miss cuts, um, hit bad shots under pressure situations that mean a lot to make a cut. Um, look, I missed 14 cuts in a row my first year on tour. Wow. Um, so I, I went and, and played in the 2016 Masters, was low amateur in, in the 2016 Masters. I went and played the RBC Heritage the next week in uh, Hilton Head yeah. and finished fourth. That gave no me enough. Way. Yeah. As an amateur? Uh, no, I turned professional that next day. I Good for turned, you. Yeah, it was, yeah, right. So you got a nice little paycheck. I got a nice paycheck, but what was cool. Every that, time I see that on TV, dude, it hurts me. Why? It, it, dude, it hurt, no, it hurts me when an amateur oh. is doing great and then they go get like top five. And they don't do anything, yeah. I'm like, like bro, Michael, you just could have right? made like. Thor Bjornsson? Yeah, that, Thor yeah, Bjornsson, yeah. yeah, yeah that's actually a good well example. Travelers, right. Yeah. Play that's great. Okay. It's it's a good learning experience, and I think that with the NIL, like back in the day, it was a lot worse. The mm-hmm. NIL today, you can make some good money. Yeah. Off of oh, the it's course helped a college, ton right? with sponsorships and stuff. I couldn't make anything. I won the NCAA's and didn't do it. Didn't make anything. I mean, my yeah. my college was what got paid for essentially. Yeah. That was the only thing, but it, still. And mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on the NCAA overall? Um, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> what are you allowed to say? No, well, they um, took away my favorite coach. Really? Two years. Yeah. I mean, Josh Gregory got in trouble uh, for some pretty ridiculous allegations. Really? Yeah. It just it was it was. Dumb. I haven't heard. I didn't know. Yeah. Well, um, f- like one of the things that happened back in the day was uh, we were getting merchandise from SMU, and mm-hmm. he'd just like make us pay a dollar, two dollars, or whatever it was. He's like, just to show there's a sale. Right. Right. And uh, this is before we were at SMU. Yeah. And they're on recruits and stuff like that. But it was after the, the time limit where they could, we could be on visits. It was perfectly legal. Everything was great. 
And then, um, like he would say, here, here's a belt. And he's like, just give me a couple dollars or whatever to show a sale of transaction yeah. or whatever. And that was technically illegal. Right. Uh, and then he was apparently texting some uh, junior golfers uh, before the time you could. But it was because those junior golfers, a lot of them had sent them texts saying, hey, con- uh, uh, just shot 66 at this tournament or whatever. <laughs> I had one by three or whatever. And he was like, hey, congratulations. Great job. Something super it was, simple. Yeah, it was stupid that's stuff. That's so like, dumb. Yeah, that's what I know. That's the yeah. story that I know. It could be different. I don't know, but that's what I heard. That's right. what I know. I was in the thick of it. Yeah. Uh, he he got fired, essentially, or he had to resign after the second year. And then Jason and Enloe came on board. And um, my junior year, I won the NCAA individual title yeah. then. But we were a great golf team. The, we the only reason I ask that is because you talking about the NIL and stuff like that. Yeah. I obviously, like, I lost my eligibility before yeah. I ever made a single penny online. Just ridiculous. Because people were making money off my image and likeness. Mm-hmm. And it was it was pretty crazy. But in the initial, and, and again, like, talking about the NIL, I'm super happy that they've you know, kind of yeah, gone that direction. It's a great step. It makes it's me super right happy direction. because when I was trying to go, you know, and yep. play in college, um, ESPN and various outlets would post my videos and they would make money off of mm-hmm. my image. Mm-hmm. And uh, we finally, we just talked to NCAA and we were like, hey, is this okay? Is like, what is going on? Is it okay? Like, he hasn't even made money yet. Like, is this all good? They, they gave me two options. They're like, the only way to have your eligibility and keep your eligibility is to one, make your private or make your accounts private and quit posting videos or two, just like stop altogether and just like delete and like quit posting anything because they, I guess what they saw is they knew what I was pursuing. I had 13,000 followers at the time and I guess they saw that I was like pursuing something in social media and What's I guess the problem? maybe, <laughs> maybe the yeah. idea of, you know, other outlets and people making money off my image and likeness and then them seeing what I was pursuing to eventually do and maybe make money in the future. And so they're like, basically shut it down or wow. lose your eligibility. That, and I was like, I'm going for this. Yeah, that's, <laughs> so, a, that's a zero-sum game they're playing. Yeah, there. They want to control all of you, which is not right. Yeah. I mean, con- controlling... If you, controlling uh, media and stuff like that's really not right. Yeah, and, and I think the world is starting to see, especially like Bitcoin, yeah. like the decentralized aspect of things, I think the world is starting to see more of that come into play where your name, image, and likeness um, has to be used just for, for more than just fully controlling you. Because mm-hmm. if someone, if an entity fully controls you, let's say you, right? Right. What incentive do you have to go out and create? You, you don't, yeah. You really don't, no. right? If somebody fully controls you, you and you can't, you can't make anything you off of your name, image, and likeness. If, yeah. Exactly. You're, you're owned. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a lot of the big problems that we're starting to see. And that's one of the things that we'll get into in yeah. just a little bit. Yeah. But I think that's a big deal that nobody truly understands is that we want to be able to create. Yeah. For people. Absolutely. And we want the ability to, to give to people, not to be shut out. Yeah. Well, actually, lucky us. Um, it's next thing on the note is. <laughs> Now that we're on the topic, let's talk about the PGA Tour a little uh, bit. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, well, let's first let's let's start about yeah, or let's let's go back to your first maybe breakthrough. So you played in what well, you said RBC. Yeah, I, um, I, I uh, finished fourth. I made enough money to get onto the Corn Ferry Tour. You're right. And what that, that was for next is so the Corn Ferry Tour Finals. I could get into the Corn Ferry Tour Finals. Gotcha. I could have made enough money. John Rahm made enough money to get his tour card for the next year. I didn't. But well, I got how enough, does it? Whoa, whoa, whoa. How man, does that there's work? a certain threshold. You have to make a certain amount of dollars to be in the top 125 through seven events. I uh, only made okay. enough money to get to the Corn Ferry Tour Finals. Gotcha. Which I went to the Corn Ferry Tour Finals and I won uh, at Canterbury Golf Club. It was mm-hmm. the first. It was called the DA, the, the DAP Championship, DAP Championship. Okay. It was their first event. It was the first leg of their finals. Sort yeah, of at thing. Corn Ferry. Yeah. That made me enough uh, points and money to be in the top five through the web.com finals to get a tour card. Mm-hmm. So once I won that first event, I was in. I missed the next three cuts. <laughs> Still made it in. I was no the way. fifth guy uh, um, that got in, fourth or fifth guy that got in. Was it some sort of conditional or was it fully? Like it you it, it was somewhat conditional, yeah. but I got a bunch. I got unlimited exemptions. Oh, okay. So I could Great. play. I, and they were going to give me an exemption considering what I did the year before. Um, so I played... <laughs> Man, how many? I played like 28 events. I missed 14 cuts in a row. And now this is on the PGA Tour? This is on the PGA Tour. So next year, get on the PGA Tour, make a couple cuts here and there, whatever. 
I missed 14 cuts in a row. That feeling is going to be discouraging. Uh, no, let's just say there were the times where I felt like the littlest human being in the world and didn't want to play golf ever again. Don't blame you. I'd be the same it way. It was... Uh, I mean, you probably at some point through that, yeah. you're... You're losing, oh, you're, you're, you're losing belief in what your, your mind starts to you know. to cycle in really bad directions. Yeah, and there's a lot of people that I have close to me still that were part of that moment that kept me down the right line. And if you don't have the right people around you, you can you can yeah, it's not a fun life. No. I mean, you're you're losing money. Literally, the 14 cuts that um, I missed, uh, I lost sixty seventy thousand dollars. It's crazy. And I mean, that's, that's what happens to these guys out there, by the way. They're not making money all the time. Yeah, if yeah. you miss a cut, you're out of luck. You're paying for everything. You're paying for your, 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 your pretty much food, hotel, airplane, fare, entry fee, like everything. Yeah. And your caddy, your physio, your coach, <laughs> you're, yeah. you're, you're out of luck. I mean, yeah. You're so just... you think about some of those guys that miss cuts all year, right? Finish 200th on the money list. Yeah, and you would think, like, from an outside perspective, you're like, oh, you're a PGA Tour player. You must be rolling in it. Or you, no, you there's must people be losing money on the Absolutely. PGA Tour. Yeah, and we, I mean, you've seen it's a little it different now. Again. I will specify. It is a little bit diff- different now, okay. which, luckily for, for Liv, we were part of the, that change mm-hmm. where we were able to make uh, the, the top one. Well, all PGA Tour players at least make $500,000 for the year. Right. which is awesome. And I had been advocating that from the beginning. When I missed 14 cuts in a row, I was lucky enough to have sponsors with me. There were guys that didn't, yeah. and they, they lost money. Um, and I always advocated for those top 200 guys uh, on the PGA Tour. All Everybody that had a tour card, they should at least be netting neutral to making a little bit. Right. You should at least be making a little bit of money from my perspective because you're an asset, you're making money. Anyway, so that's kind of what happened. I got on tour, missed 14 cuts in a row, um, then went and next four events played pretty well, made the cuts. And then the last event, which was the John Deere, I went and won. That was my first yeah. win ever and went and played the British Open. They missed the cut by 12 the next week. So <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's golf for you, though. That, you that can is, have it one day and but, just but that the moment, the next day. That moment right there. What did you wait? Hold on. I want to 21 under uh, John Deere Classic. No. I think so. Something like that. I don't even remember. I think I might have nailed that. that. I need someone to fact check that. that because yeah. I'm pretty sure I remember watching that on TV like and right after that? it. Yeah. What year was that? It was 2017. Yeah. No, I'm pretty sure I remember. You might be right 20, too. 21 under. The that's, one that I remember, the, the one that I remember the most, I don't know why, it was the 2018 Shriners mm-hmm. that I won and it was 21 under. Really? And the only reason I remember it was because it's Vegas and it was blackjack. Yeah. So, <laughs> nice. That's the only reason why I'm I love that. I love that. Uh, so, so, well, ta- yeah. okay. You had your lows. You had the 14 missed cuts. Yeah. You obviously have a high. Talk about your highs on the PGA Tour. What was good, I guess, uh, while you were a there? A lot of things were good. Yeah. I mean, people don't realize uh, the highs that you can have on the tour. It's, it's, uh, it's incredible. Winning, winning a PGA Tour event is uh for me, growing up, that was the only thing that was out there. Mm-hmm. And other than a major, that was the epitome of your golfing career for most most guys. And, and winning one time is people's career. Mm-hmm. And I'm just a weirdo in the fact that I, I want to continue to keep proving people. How many times uh, did you win on the PGA Tour? I, I won eight times in the That's PGA Tour. So I won 2017 John Deere Classic, won the Memorial Mm-hmm. One that's the, special. That's amazing, by the way. I mean, Jack's place that's is special. really cool. Getting a handshake from Jack was unbelievable. Um, off that 18th green. Yeah. I then went and won the Northern Trust, the first FedEx Cup playoff mm-hmm. event. I won the Boston, CBC Boston event, which is the Dell Technologies, which is the second playoff event. So I went back to back. So I no went back way. to back on the PGA I didn't even tour. know that. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Not and, many people can say they've ever yeah. done that. And then I went and lost the FedEx Cup. Uh, I didn't play that well the third week, and then I uh, did okay, finished middle of the pack in the Tour Championship and mm-hmm. lost to uh, just, Justin Rose, won the FedEx Cup that year. What year was that again? 2018. 2018. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. And then Tiger finished second because he won the Tour Championship. And, yep. Um, anyway, I, I felt like I had a really good shot. If you win it two times in a FedEx Cup playoff, event, I mean, you, you have a really good chance to win yeah. the FedEx Cup, and I didn't. It was, it was kind of a weird deal, but whatever. That is whatever. Kind of crazy. Um, felt like I had a good chance to win the Player of the Year. Uh, that year didn't either. Right. Brooks Kepka won it because he won two majors. And uh, 
Yeah, I mean, that's about the time that all the feud stuff started so happening. So I'm going to interrupt funny. you. We'll get into the feud stuff and all that. Um, was the uh, Brooks Kepka beef real? Oh, was, it, was it real? <laughs> yeah, it actually was right off the bat. We, we didn't, there was a lot of miscommunication. Okay. Coming from caddies and agents and stuff like that. And then us personally just not communicating effectively. Uh, him thinking I was just a, an oddball, and which I am, fair enough. Uh, and then him thinking he's, you know, some uh, a-hole that's just trying to be a big man, high school bully sort of thing. And that's kind of what it, what it was. Right. Um, but, I mean, look, we had the match, and he kicked my ass in the match, and fair enough. Uh, but I've kicked his ass numerous times in the golf course as well. And, you know, it's, Are just, you guys it's a fun now? adventure. Yeah, we're fine. We're fine. Okay. We, we have, but we love, we love playing into it, and I think, you know, there are times where – we still don't necessarily like some of the things that they do. So right. it's never going to be like we're hanging out all the time, but we do have a good mutual respect for what we did on the live side of things. Yeah. And uh, we, we totally understand why we did what we did. Okay. So that, that leads perfectly into, so had a great PGA tour career. Yeah. I'll finish off the, the victories real quick. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You so have like four I more. Was, I was moving. I was moving. So I, I My bad. Boston, uh, Dell technologies. And then later that year in 2018, I won, the Shriners Open, huh? which is in Vegas. Uh, that was an awesome win. Come the next year, oh, this isn't on the PGA Tour, but I won the Dubai Desert Classic, and it was a European really Tour cool event, one. which is cool. That's yeah. a cool. You guys just I've played been the there golf twice, course, right? Yeah, been there twice. Beautiful. So sick. So sick. The eighth hole, so sick. Unreal. Yeah. It looks like you're in a painting, like literally, literally not real life. Yeah, you're like, what is this? Yeah. Um, don't win anything 2019. I then go, you know what, screw this. I'm going to start hitting the ball farther because I couldn't figure out my golf swing. I was playing really well in 2018, obviously. Right. I gained speed, a little bit of speed, lost it. Then I went, screw this, I'm just hitting it really far. Hit it really far. Uh, gained a lot of mass, got big, unhealthy in the process. It's a whole other conversation. I then win. Eight protein shakes today. Literally. Uh, I then win four weeks after the restart, after COVID. Mm -hmm. um, almost win Colonial the first week back. Wait, wait. Four weeks after the restart, what did you win? 2020. Four weeks after I won the Rocket Mortgage. That's what it was. But yeah. what I was saying is like it, it, it was Colonial, then there was a couple more events, and then I won Detroit. You won a which, WGC, no? No, no. I finished second. Second, that's what it was. It was in Mexico to Patrick Reed. Right. Um, I remember that. Not going to get into that. Oh, uh, <laughs> not going to get into that. <laughs> no, no. Please get into that. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I want to no, hear the it, tea. Okay. Look, you don't have it, to. Patrick and I are, are great, and we're, we're fine. Um you know, he, he, he does anything and everything to win, for sure. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you that. That's yeah. all you got to say. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, it, what I saw is what I saw. And, like, I, I look, it's past in the past. He did it. He's the one that's got to deal with it if it is what it is. And I, I move on. I'm, I don't have a problem with it. It's no big deal. Right. Um, but it's just one of those things that, you know, some, sometimes you – you feel a certain way about a situation. You don't know if it actually happened, but you feel a certain way. And it's like, uh, I've heard know. stories. Yeah. But look, I have no problem with them. I don't have an issue. There's, there's no issue, but, it, but it is funny to think that it is talked a lot about and that happened. And I was like, all right, whatever. He's gonna have to deal with it. I don't have to deal with it. Is this My a public, is, is this a public thing that no, happened no, no, or no. is this just something no, you no, saw? No, no, no. no I, I saw it. It was, it was in the first hole. Um, just took a drop. It was like, mm, yeah, I don't know. a little sus. It was just a little weird, but, um, well, good on you, though. Good on but, you for moving so past it. So that's the thing that people don't realize, too. Whenever somebody's like, oh, I hit it. I think I need to drop here. Like, I hit it over. They hit it in the water. And it goes in the water. And they, 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 they're, like, adamant. Like, this is where this is where yeah. it crossed. What are you going to do? I'm just like, all right, cool. It's on your conscience, man. Yeah, like, even though you fully place. know it's 20 like, yards back yeah, or wherever. If yeah. you're like, uh, that's incorrect. Like, I know in life, karma is going to eventually get you. 100%. Yeah, at some point, it's going to come back and bite you in the butt in whatever mm -hmm. way. I always say the truth always finds a way out. Couldn't agree Always more. finds a way out. And so that's, that's for me, if somebody's going to be adamant about it or they're like, where do you think it is? I'm like, I'm, I'm letting you use your judgment. I'm not about to get involved in that. It's not right. my place nor, nor my headspace to be able to be involved in that. Yeah. You do you. And if you feel comfortable with it, then good on you. Yeah. That, that's, that's my take on you know, the controversies where he said, she Karma's said this. A bitch. It, it, it is. And, and it it'll can come, come back to bite you in the ass. It really can. It's cliche, but it honestly is. I've seen it happen too many times. It's um, very true, though. It's very true. So statement. finish off uh, 2020, won the Rocket Mortgage Classic, then went, won the U.S. Open. Um, Which, by the way, is that the most special one? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I've always wanted to win a major, and winning in front of my 
dad and mom was really cool. They weren't there. Mm. It was COVID year, so it was Wingfoot. Yeah. But I got to see him on the screen after. It was really cool. They did a FaceTime. It was, That's it was amazing. Awesome. Yeah, it was. It made me cry. It was a I, good moment on that. I uh, can only imagine. I think it's online somewhere. But then after the U.S. Open, had a little bit of a struggle struggle period. Um, I win the Arnold Palmer, hitting it all over the place. Because at this point, I'm hitting it really far. And I in the U.S. Open, fair enough, I was hitting it everywhere, too. It wasn't, I was not hitting it far, but it wasn't going necessarily straight. Right. 2021, I'm hitting it all over the place, not hitting it great. Go back to this old Cobra LTD driver and just really struggling did with it, my driving. Did, did the driver suck? Oh, I, that particular <laughs> driver did. Yes, the way it was built. Yeah, it, it absolutely <laughs> did. And I, I, I get in, uh, obviously got in a lot of trouble. And yeah. I love Cobra. I have no issues with, with what happened. And right. our relationship ended uh, on good terms. It just we had good. to separate ways, obviously, with Liv and stuff mm -hmm. going on. They didn't know the future, and they didn't know what they could do with me after that. And, and I understand and respect that. I just wish that we could have continued to move on because there's some amazing stuff that I'm getting into now yeah. that will ch change and revolutionize the game again. Yeah, um, I've heard a lot about yeah, it's, it too. It's pretty insane. It, it, it's crazy, and clearly you can see how my performance from Greenbrier has changed after that. And yeah, the, the confidence that I have. And I've never seen you hit the ball so straight. By the way, that's in the, the little point. bit that we've played. Yeah, it's I haven't seen you miss with it's, your driver. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Which is not at all what you were saying twenty twenty one or whatever. I had no you idea were, where the ball was going. I'd tow it, heel it, and it would just go in places. It just I, f I literally felt like it was a shotgun coming off the face. Yeah. You had no like, clue what was going to happen. You had to hit it everywhere. You had to hit it dead nuts yeah. every single time. I had to time. have a certain face angle with a certain part of the strike on the face. And I was like, this com I just have to be so perfect. Yeah. And that's why nobody can gain speed, by the way. Anyone that's super fast right now has to always try and slow down. Yeah. Uh, that shouldn't be the case. The equipment should fit what you're able to produce, not right. the other well, way Well, and it's also something that golf hasn't really seen much of. No. They haven't seen the speeds that you it, were up to, especially and, competitive level. And by the way, a robot can't swing fast enough yet. Really? The, no. Elect, they it's, don't make them no, Not only that, it's, it's, the problem is the speed of light. Okay. I can go into Wait, this. Wait, explain it. Sorry. The problem is the I speed hear of about light. This. So I know a guy. Uh, Speed of light in yeah. golf. That's just a weird <laughs> sentence right there. So there's a guy out of San Diego. He's part of Golf Labs. Uh, Gene, he, he's a great man. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of great conversations over the years trying to figure out this driver problem. And he has a robot that can swing up to 124 miles an hour. And I'm like, why can't you go faster? He goes, well, speed of light. I go, what do you mean, speed <laughs> of light? Huh? How? And... He goes, I need to know at every three millimeters where the face of the driver is to make sure I hit the ball correct, right? right. If, if, if it doesn't have the relay, the proper relay every three millimeters, the machine starts to freak out. And it, if it misses points along the arc, it doesn't know how to sequence the turning of the handle to the lengthening of the club. Uh -huh. And so it's not sequencing correctly, essentially. Because if it misses one, it doesn't know if it's the face is open or closed at that point. To to because if it gets off, it starts it readjusts every three millimeters. It's gotcha. like doo -doo 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 -doo. it's that quick. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And wow, but that's the speed of light. Yeah. And so at a certain point in time, when you go past 124 mile an hour swing speed with that length of club, it can't catch up. It starts missing points, and right. it misses enough points to where he's not sure if he can get good data at impact every single swing. Right. So that's kind of the problem. He's like, I just can't figure out a way around it right now with having a three millimeter interval. Um, That's crazy. But, yeah, yeah. And so working on that, how, how to figure that. And shooting it out of a cannon doesn't work either. I don't know if you know much about testing, but when they shoot it out of a cannon, I don't know if you've ever been, like maybe Callaway. No. you ever seen how no, they I test. So you can shoot a ball out of a cannon mm -hmm. onto a face. So instead of having the club hit the ball, the ball hits the face. Really? Yeah, yeah. So it's testing like durability in certain parts of the face. Um Anyway. Never heard about that. Long story. That's, dude, that's so sophisticated. Oh, my gosh. All I, can, I see I is can, a golf club, and I just <laughs> grab it. Like, I never Look, think at the end of the day, it's the, same, it. it's the same thing with me. Right. But I've always had problems with the way I swing, with how I'm setting up, with uh, you name it, whatever it is. I've always had issues with my golf game. Right. And so I've gone to the extent, the, the, the deepest depths of the ocean mm -hmm. to figure out how to find a distinct advantage with the way I play the game. Yeah, the way I play is so unique and different. That's just what I do. You've done what no one has been willing to do. And, and so it, gaining all that speed opened a black hole. 
Right. <laughs> Literally You're a black interstellar hole. interstellar flying into a black hole. Pretty yeah. much. I was like, what's going to happen now? And yeah. nobody knew. The robot couldn't test it. Couldn't yeah. go fast enough. Nor have we had enough test points or testing parameters to see what's actually going to happen off the toe uh, of the club or the heel of the club. Super far out on the toe of the club. Super far on the heel. Right. Low, high. Have you everywhere. seen the movie Interstellar, by the way? That's my I was about to say that has to be a movie. Literally that you like. my favorite movie it's besides uh, my the trilogy. Favorite. It's my favorite Batman. movie too. Dude, the scene when Matthew McConaughey is at the end and he's like looking at the bookshelf, like trying to, do you know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh, yeah. And he's yeah. in like. Trippy. It's crazy. Trippy. So that's the state of mind you were basically in, is what you're saying. <laughs> no, uh, I'll tell you the state of mind I was in. It was, it was more like um, Shawshank Redemption. Yep. I felt like I was in jail for, yeah. for no reason. That's fair. I mean, I literally—I felt like I was captured for, with, with, with zero reasoning. Yeah, you and were I doing couldn't all get the out. right things, but getting exactly. bent over and I just, railed exactly in every direction. And that's why at times there were outbursts, there were frustrations, there were things that I said and did mm -hmm. as a result of that, not feeling like there was any leg to stand on. Yeah, and it doesn't make it right. I still messed up in those moments, and I'll forever admit that I'm the first person to admit when I'm wrong. But frustration builds but and frustration, everyone's humans. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not a robot. Yeah. And nor is any player out there on tour. They get mad all the time. Oh, yeah. So, you know, relate, from a rela relatability standpoint, we, we understand a lot of people's frust golfers' frustrations on the Absolutely. golf course when they can't hit a shot right or they try to swing it well and it misses. And maybe it even and more, to be fair. I think because <laughs> PGA Tour player, live players, are so good and so dialed in when you guys are hitting shots just the slightest bit off like for me it doesn't bother me because i'm like okay yeah, i just that pulled me yeah like, i just like pulled it miss, 10 yards don't care me missing pus today i couldn't stand it yeah and i understand <laughs> I it's because it. you guys are at that level so yeah. it builds that perfectionist mindset because Correct. you've done it over and over and over again yeah, so it's a psychotic mindset us golfers have yeah but i mean it's that's you have to be psychotic to be where you're at that's right if you weren't then you wouldn't be at the level you that's are right so you had a great PGA Tour career. Yep. Eight times, won the U.S. Open. And by the way, I appreciate what the PGA Tour has done for me. As much as I can there's tell. been some tough moments with management, it's still much appreciated. Ever the opportunities they've afforded me, and I will never, never forget what they've done for me. Absolutely. So why did you decide to go? Uh, break it down from every standpoint because... I'll say this. It's a loaded question. Yeah, no, it is. Because when I saw it all going down, obviously outside perspective here. Yeah, what was your perspective? I didn't really know. Dude, I didn't I didn't dislike Liv. I didn't dislike the PGA Tour. I just didn't know because I wasn't in y'all's situation. And I just kind of stayed silent as much as I could. Um, I think in general, when it comes to business, competition's good. A rising tide raises all boats. Um, if there's another major player... In, in the golf industry, the golf world, the competitive golf world, then I think that's a good thing. Um, there was a lot of arguments going around where the money was based out of, you know, this, that, and the other. And it ended up, from the research I've done and the people I've talked to, a lot of the uh, public knowledge was kind of backwards and not correct. And, correct. So, and so um, yep. I was seeing all this come out, not knowing really any information. And... I also am, I'm human too. If I see a lot of money on the table, I'm thinking to myself like... Family. Family, you know, exactly. Family, setting your loved ones you up for life. Are you kidding me? That's the first life. thing I thought of. Absolutely, because that's what everybody wants in life is financial yeah. stability. I mean, that's the most important thing, or at least one of the most important things. Um, so there was that side of it, and then I was reading a lot of stuff online, and I was thinking about the legacy side of it. So... In your mind, what was what were the key factors as to why you ended up going to live? I uh, guess? One more time with my family. Um, I haven't been able to see my nephew or my my niece's birthday in ten, well, six, six, seven years that I was mm -hmm. on tour. Um, spending more time with my brother, spending more time at home, taking care of uh, business matters at home in Dallas, and then also building outside of the game of golf mm -hmm. was a big deal for me. Uh, as you can see, there's a the driving range that I'm a part of now, and mm -hmm. we're working on that in Fort Worth out at Hawks Creek. I'm doing something um, doing something elsewhere in the world. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not going to – I can't actually talk about it right now. We're, we're, <laughs> it's strategic, strategic, but yeah. um, it is a place that's near and dear to my heart. And 
I would say, uh, obviously, money. I mean, yeah. money is just gigantic. You, you got to, everybody's got to realize it. It's called spade a spade here. That's right. That's right. And if anybody that's on our side, that's on the lift side, doesn't tell you that, I mean, obviously, money was a gigantic. It is the pretty much main reason besides family. Absolutely. Um, and then what that money is able to do for uh, the communities that we're part of is a big deal. The yeah. way we give back. And that's one of the tough parts that a lot of people got screwed up on was the fact that the money was coming from, you know, they were saying blood money and all that, mm -hmm. right? And you can understand that point up to a certain level. Any dollar, though, that you've had in your hands, in your bank account, at some point was run through in a negative manner, mm -hmm. in a fraudulent manner, in mm -hmm. a non-proper use manner, right? It's really about what you do with the money that you have currently yeah. that matters most. And I can't I communicate that. that enough. The people have to understand the money that's on your side, you can only control what you do with that money now. Yeah. I don't care necessarily where it comes from. What you have in your hands and what you're able to do with it is the most important thing. Yeah. And that's what got me around all those conversations. Oh, it's from this, it's from that, whatever. Okay, I get it. I get it. So is it better in their hands or in mine? Right. And now that it is in your hands, you're going to use it properly. That's right. It's exactly right. And yeah. so I felt more comfortable being able to give more to my foundation, being able to effectively influence an ec economy here in Fort Worth and back in where a place I hold near and dear to my heart and being able to give to charities now a lot more, being right. able to effectively give to SMU now a lot more. Yeah. All these things that I'm able to do that, that people necessarily don't realize. And guess what? I'm also paying taxes on it. Yeah. So your roads are getting built because of that money, baby. Absolutely. Your roads <laughs> yeah. are getting no, built. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, so, okay. sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. And I, you don't have to expose, you know, the exact number or anything like that. But what yeah. I will ask is whatever you got paid, was that, was that like the number? Would you, you wouldn't have gone lower. Like that's where you were very comfortable leaving something that you had been so passionate about on the PGA tour. Because here's what, here's where I saw it. It's like, I, if I'm putting myself in your shoes and I'm a PGA tour player, I look at two separate things. I look at legacy I look at the future and money, essentially. And, and, and by and, the way, on the legacy card, real quickly, real mm -hmm. quickly. Yeah, let's talk about it. You can make history wherever. Absolutely. It's going to take time. Absolutely. It is going to take time, but you can make history wherever. Couldn't agree more. And that is where, like, Liv is changing the game a lot with the group stuff, and, and we'll get yeah, into yeah. a lot of what yep. Liv's doing. Um, but that's where I saw it as, like, if I'm a PGA Tour pro, like, there is definitely a number that I would probably take to go be able to support my family and support my next generation, whoever, whatever, mm -hmm. and do good things with this money over here. There's a number, but, you know, it, it definitely, it did part of it kind of suck a little bit. Was there anything that in the back of your mind where you're like, man, it's like, um, not I've with, been here for so long. Not with the money that was offered. Because I realized golf isn't the most important thing in my life. It's about influencing and effectively helping the communities that I'm a part of in a beneficial way that, that is a humongous passion of mine more than the game of golf. Yeah. And I realized if I could do that, that's what I want my legacy to be. I don't want my legacy to necessarily be about winning all these tournaments. I want it to be about how I effectively improve uh, people's lives in every place that I'm in. Yeah. Whether it's Dallas Off or back course. home. Yeah. I mean, that's the most important part that of is, it all. At the end of the day, golf is a sport and... Now you're in a position where you can utilize yeah. this to change your life and, you know, you get it. So, so your that, family's that, life. That decision was not easy. It, there was a number. I mean, there was it was a couple weeks of <laughs> back and forth, mm -hmm. um, calling my family, calling the people that supported me, calling all my sponsors was not easy. Mm -hmm. Had a lot of I called every single sponsor. And I also called Jay Monahan. When I made the decision and I signed, I, I called Jay Monahan personally really? and told him the decision. Yep, it's the right thing. It was the right thing what to do. What was his reaction? Man, 
Uh, that's a personal conversation I'm not going to get into. Sorry. You I, no, you're good. It's, I would not Leave it wanna, off the record. I'm just not going to let... I mean, it, it was it was obviously a, a, a sad response, but mm-hmm. it was an understanding response okay. as well. We'll so, leave it at that. Then. Yeah. Yeah. So PGA Tour and Live, there's a lot of differences that I see from the media side of things because... As the, media, co- the media is playing everyone. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's just, it's just but as a is. content creator, even like I've been to, I'm not even going to get into what my experience with sure. the PGA Tour. I'm going to talk to you about your experience. So, well, all right. With the PGA Tour, <laughs> um, I'll just say this from what I saw, if I was a PGA Tour, put myself in your shoes, if I was a PGA Tour player, um, they kind of own everything. Well, they do, and I'll explain. I'll explain this. There's a lot of. And I'm not trying to shit on the PGA no, Tour. No, no, no. I'm and, just, and I'm not either. This by was the way, initial this is, thoughts. This These is, were initial thoughts. This is not we, shitting on anyone. This is just reality. Yeah. This is the facts, and when you look at the facts, it's that you sign a document at the beginning of the year where you have to get a release to play in another event uh, outside of the PGA Tour. Mm-hmm. Well, technically, what that means is that you're owned by the tour for 52 weeks once mm-hmm. you sign that contract. And it's in the bylaws. Um, they usually, 99.9% of the time, allow you to play in other tournaments. Um, whether it's you know, Sunshine Tour or whatever, they, they usually grant that. Now, when Live came about, they didn't because they viewed it as a competitor and a threat of the same prize money and purse money that was available. And they view that as a threat. Um, so... <laughs> If you look at the facts, you are owned 52 weeks a year. Mm-hmm. You can't go out and play without a release. Mm-hmm. You ha- they have to give you release. Whereas I looked at the deal with Liv, yes, we, we had to play these events, barring some injury. You know, um, If we had an injury, people haven't played. There's been backups. But you had to play those 14 events. And I'm like, well, this is a way better deal yeah. than the tour. I'm getting guaranteed money. I'm getting guaranteed money, and I play less, and it's three days, <laughs> and we own a part of a team, and we own, um, well, and we spend more time with our family, and I can create businesses outside of this, and yeah, they own 100% of my commercial rights, but what about digital? Right. What yeah, that's, so yeah. that's what gets me a lot. So that's where things started to get really interesting. And uh, now, uh, as I'm talking with people, this has become a very interesting point. Like, obviously, I'm creating content on YouTube, and, mm-hmm. and there, there are opportunities uh, for all of us mm-hmm. to make it mutually beneficial, affiliate marketing. I mean, I know Liv sees the, go- the golden ticket, the picture, the big picture. And that's what I'm most excited about with Liv, is not only the ability, of the freedom that they gave me off the bat, but the open sea, the blue ocean in front of all of us, we have the ability to cultivate exactly what we think we can for future generations to come in the golf space. Yeah. So initially, when I saw this all go down, I looked at the media side of things because I've had experiences, PGA yeah. Tour or whatever, not going to get into that. But when you're at a PGA Tour tournament, you really just don't own any of your own content. Um, you can't. You, you cannot create your own content on there unless it's like you can get a golf swing or whatever. And but if you've got a sponsor, you can't so do anything with that. What sponsor was very site. interesting, and this is, I'll just say it, this is what I experienced with the PGA Tour, is I would get hired by a sponsor of a PGA Tour event yep. to go to a PGA Tour pro am, right. and I'd play in the pro am, and I would film it. And I actually had this happen one very specific time where I was playing. I'm not even going to mention his name, but I was playing with a couple pro golfers who really enjoyed it. And they were saying how positive and how good that that video was going to be for them because it was going to push their name out there more. They were going to have a lot of eyeballs on them. Mm -hmm. The fans were going to get to know them, see their golf swing, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, Film the video, get back, ready to upload it. And, and keep in mind, I'm getting paid to do this by a sponsor of a PGA mm-hmm. Tour event. Get back, edit all the content. Nope, can't post that. Nope, can't post that. Not allowed to post any of the professional golf swings from that day. And the sponsor this gets mad. mad. So this is very interesting. That This is coming from the PGA Tour. Can't post that. Can't post that. Um, 
And it was it was funny because this was I believe there is there a Monday and a Wednesday pro am or yeah. Monday? okay so it was the less important one whichever that one was it wasn't covered by any media no one was filming that day no one was doing anything so it wasn't like I was stepping on toes of say like a covered prof- like professional pro am that you would see on TV or something like that or any content at that there was but nothing how does, how does golf channel have the rights to that? well here's what's even funnier is i posted a swing video on my story and within like 15 minutes got contacted by the pga tour them telling me to take it down this is on a monday even program. though you don't they don't own you at all no, you didn't sign anything i didn't sign anything so it's very interesting and then obviously we get into this whole thing where the sponsor is getting mad at me because they're not mad at me. The sponsor's mad as well because I'm trying to do my job, but I'm not allowed to because the PGA Tour is stepping on toes. So that's what I dealt with, and I've heard a lot of stories uh, with players dealing with similar things. I can't even begin to tell you <laughs> the difficulties <laughs> yeah. I've experienced with that situation. <laughs> and and so, you know, there's a lot of things that I see on the live side that I'm like, yeah. there's a lot of money, there's a lot of this, that, sure. and the other, but... Also, that side of it, there seems to be a lot more freedom is yep. where I'm actually it's getting. It's a blue ocean. Yeah. It's a blue ocean. They and are the, becoming more restrictive in certain things, but a, a guy like me, I'm able to, to talk to the right people to have, help them understand what's going on. Right. And so it's nice to be able to have that voice. Uh, and again, I tried to get on the pack for six years. Clearly, nobody wanted me on. Um, just I think a little bit differently and outside the box. It's probably why. Mm-hmm. Um, this is what it is, and I tried to help out for numerous years. They, they didn't want me on, and this is what it is. I don't know what else to say about it. It's just one of those things that yeah. never happened, and uh, lucky enough, Liv came around, and uh, we, we all see eye to eye on the same things. Yeah. So, and, and now, correct me if I'm wrong, but Liv really helped push the PGA Tour to support the players more financially now, correct? Uh, yes. If Liv doesn't exist, uh, the players don't get what... It was, they got. It was very funny how they like, actually got a bonus, by the way. Yeah, that's what people don't think about and realize. I don't think um, all the purse increases, the minimum wage guarantee, sort of thing. They get five hundred thousand dollars each if they don't hit that mark. Um, numerous sorts of things. Well, they, they got a bonus on. A lot of, of money just kind of appeared, which was very interesting. Uh, you don't uh, have to talk on it, but legally, I cannot talk. You about don't it. talk on it, <laughs> but I just thought it was very interesting how like. And again, I'm complete outside perspective. I really don't know much of what's Go going ahead, on. Go ahead, say say whatever but you want. I'll I'll, as, I'll as soon as Liv <laughs> comes into the picture, all of a sudden the purses. There's what well, was it? Twenty four tournaments or, or or I don't remember. Uh, the I think it was eight or eight tournaments. Purpose, whatever. Yeah, elevated eight events. tournaments were with an insanely elevated twenty million purse. dollars. Twenty million. That's where I'm getting the twenty. Yeah. Um, to twenty million dollar purses, which was very interesting. Which what Liv was doing. Right. But they had a hundred and some players in there and we only had forty eight. Exactly. So we were still getting paid more technically. Either way, elevated. Sure. Conveniently, right after yeah. all this is going on. So I'm just seeing this, I'm like, okay. Clear, yeah. There's something there was clearly there's, something fishy. <laughs> there's something happening it's, here. It's very That's very all fishy. I'm gonna say. There's something happening. I will here. say it's very fishy and I'm surprised. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm just yeah. It it, it blows my yeah. mind. I mean I was I was all a part of it and like Look, I love the PGA Tour. It's just it's frustrating how non-transparent it is. So okay, that, and that's all I wanted. Like <laughs> that's all that's all I cared about. You know, in the end, it was it was just about like guys, like come on, let's. I want to help make the PGA Tour the greatest tour in the world. Yeah, like, this is what I'm about, mm-hmm. and just so okay happen. transparency happen. thing. I thought it was very interesting how all of a sudden out of nowhere after. Yeah, the PGA Tour had been you can make shitting, your assumptions shitting on live. They were shitting on live. They were saying a bunch of different things. Yeah, and I'm just y- y- outside can, perspective here. Yeah, then yeah, all yeah. of a sudden, yeah, because because to, the, to be honest with you, I haven't told you everything. I, I no, I know, I know. And, and this is real. Like this is yeah, like, yeah. This I, this is the first time I've ever talked about yeah. any opinions that I've ever had on the live thing. But shitting on live, you know, there's all this beef going on. People are saying a bunch of shit and. All of a sudden, there's a merge. And by the way, like all the players <laughs> seem to have no clue what was going on. I, you don't have to talk talk on what you can talk on, but yeah, I'm just gonna say. I, I mean, I was I was in a lawsuit, right? And so I can't say certain things. Yeah. Um, obviously, I, I've had to. There's a lot of things I wish I could say right now. 
I can't obviously because of um, legally I, I would I would be in trouble. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, all, all all stuff that that I think people should eventually know, but we'll never know now. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean we can't move in a positive forward direction. Right. Right. Absolutely. I mean, there's a bunch of baloney that's happened on both sides, but at a certain point it was all negative for the game of golf. And like, yeah, we can continue to keep talking about, he said, she said, nitpicking this, that, the, 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 but who's really winning? Yeah. The lawyers. <laughs> yeah. Big, big, big time. time. <laughs> yeah. And you get to a place where you're like, all right, this is ridiculous. Let's figure out a way to make this work. And I know H.E. personally, His Excellency. Um, I know his right-hand man, I, I know, the PIF, and I know how badly they want to help the game of golf out. Yeah. There's a personal reason why they want to help the golf, game of golf out, and it's a good thing. Mm-hmm. It is a great thing, and I can't emphasize that enough. Yeah. And there's a reason why with how passionate I am about improving uh, the livelihoods of people around Fort Worth, Dallas, Fort Worth area, and my hometown, they have that same vision for their hometown. Right. And it doesn't mean we all can't work together and make it make the game of golf better for everyone in the world. More accessible, easier access, better aid, mm-hmm. better economic influx. What we were able to do for Adelaide this past year, humongous economic influx. Yeah. And we want to continue to keep doing that. And I don't see the harm in that. Yeah. I don't see the harm in that. And I, and I only see someone with a passion for the game of golf like you've never seen before. Right. And he's one of the most powerful businessmen in the world. They went to Harvard. There's a crazy huge fund that's investing in numerous companies, Citibank and Uber and Facebook and companies that, you, you know, <laughs> you all know. Everyone that's watching this knows. Yeah. That all use it, mm-hmm. and he's a part of it. Yeah, and that's the frustrating part. I wish we that you know we could have all come together in the beginning when I was talking to to, to man, management, the PGA Tour management, top guys. Yeah, wink, wink. Right. Um, twenty twenty one about this is a problem for all of us if you don't engage with Yasser, with He, with the man. Right, he's a good man. As much as you don't like them, whatever, you have your own personal reasons for it, there's no reason why you can't just go have a meeting. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. But there was never a meeting that took place. Just, just have a never conversation. Never did just have a conversation. The times in life where we don't have conversations are the times when things get muddy. Absolutely. And Communication not, is key with anything. Anything in life. Yeah. I don't care what religion you are, what person you are, what you believe in, anything. The most important thing is communication. If At least sit in a room. Sit Give in a room. It a chance. Let's talk. Yeah, let's, try and, let's try and figure out how to make it work for everybody. Yeah. And all it did was hurt the game of golf initially. Um, people started hating certain people for certain things. It's like, guys, nothing's changed. We're still playing golf. Yeah. Nothing's changing. Then it gets into like this weird personal he said, she said kind of thing. Exactly. When you're not just and it's not good. With each other. And so HE out of the, because again, We had an incredible leg to stand on from our perspective. Mm-hmm. And H.E. didn't want to be the guy that took down the tour. Yeah. He didn't want to be that guy. He, 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 that's not his goal. That's, I'm not, I'm not going to speak for him, but that is what I know out of his, out of, is speaking with him and talking with him personally. He wants the betterment of the game of golf. Yeah. That is bottom line. Well, it, the, and the thing, with, the thing with Liv is when the dust settles and everyone – has their things that they said and the way they felt. At the end of the day, you said who's winning is the lawyers, but yeah. who I've always said is winning is the viewers. If you're a fan of golf, no, 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 hold on. If you're a fan of golf, more golf is good. Mm-hmm. So live competition with live just in general being created yeah. should and, be and a they, better thing. They would say that, that we're playing less, so we're technically not. But we're going to different places in the in the world. But they, if they want to watch the PGA, like if you're just a golf fan, for sure, go watch a PGA Tour event and then that. go watch a live event. I, I get that. You know what I'm saying? That. Like there's there's both that. sides to it. 100. percent And so, I, it was a very interesting thing to see everybody on social media just choosing sides instantly. Like, yeah. oh, I love live, go live, yeah. or oh, which it shouldn't be. Screw live. I like the PGA Tour. At the end of the day, you can like both. Yeah, you're right. 
And that's, that's exactly right. Um, so that, that was, that was my end perspective on yeah. it is like, I'm going to sit in the middle. I'll enjoy watching live. I'll enjoy watching the PGA yeah. tour. Whatever happens happens. Yeah. And it's really interesting how TGL is now coming about. Yeah. <laughs> that is that is a crazy thing. That is a crazy thing. Which oh, Tiger, I wish I could speak more on that. <laughs> no, it's great. I think again, more golf is 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 good. How I think simulator golf is going to work, we'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. You know, it's obviously with the most influential golfer of all time. Yeah, I don't um, really know which much about it to be honest. I don't know. Yeah, much I mean, about they're hitting the into a simulator. They're trying to recreate lies. Trying to bring like turf pads in there to make simulate uh, some of the stuff, which is which is cool. Um, I, man, if they just would have talked to Liv off the bat, mm -hmm. if they yeah. just would have given them an opportunity, I, I mean, I, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot emphasize enough. If the guys that are speaking out negatively about it would have just had a meeting with with H E, yeah, that is crazy to hear. Because this whole landscape, what Tiger could have done and still can do. It would have again revolutionized the game of golf like he did in 2000. Mm. It would have done the same thing again. Did did you know? Did you know before the merge, or yeah. before the announcement of the merge? Um, no, I actually. Well, yes, about an hour before. Okay, I knew about an hour before. Because that was such. I, I, I kind of knew because there was a deposition that didn't go very well uh, for the for the, the tour. Yeah, and I kind of knew some things were like shifting. I didn't know what was exactly going to happen, but then literally, boom, I woke up one day and you don't have to say anything. I got a call f from the man himself and he goes, yeah, so we're merging with the tour. We're going to try and f uh, to figure out ways how to make this work. I was like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> where did oh, this come from? Okay. Where did this curveball come from? Great. Yeah. Let's figure it out. <laughs> the, I'm with you, buddy. I mean, I've talked to you, with you for a long enough time period. I trust you. I believe in you. You've, you've never done me wrong. Like, let's go. Let's do it. I'm part of it now. Sweet. Dude, it's so weird how there was, it, it was all shit talking to Liv. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, <laughs> we're merging with Liv. PGA Tour is merging with Liv. That Dude, that was the weirdest, eerie when I, feeling. When I say that there, we had a humongous leg to stand on, I mean it. Yeah. And one thing that sat pretty uneasy with me, um, again, from an outside perspective, is like it was, it was so talked heavily that the tour was made by the, the players or like the tours for the people, by the people kind of thing. And Far none from of it. The, but none of them knew. And I was like reading all the Twitter stuff, Max Homa posting a bunch of the pros mm -hmm. posting stuff. It was crazy to see how shocked they were. I'm like, what? You yeah. guys didn't know either? Yeah. And what? again, th they made a decision outside the board. So it was technically something they shouldn't have done. They had to bring it to the board eventually. And that's why stuff has kind of stalled for a little bit and they had to revote. They had to that's what I, that was they had to do all this other stuff. That's yeah. another thing that I'm wondering. That's part, that's part of the reason. It's yeah. gone they, silent. They, it has, but it's because uh, some people on the board was kind of thrown off and put on. And again, they're able to make decisions like that, um, but they still have to go through a process. Uh, the board of approvals and a board of directors has to vote on it and, yeah. and whatnot. So it's, it's a bit of a process. And um, I don't know too much about it. All I know is that uh, he has a, has a good heart for the game of golf and for life in general, and wants the best for both parties. But I do know that um, if a deal doesn't get done, if, if, if a deal doesn't get done, I, I really think that uh, the PIF is just going to double down with with Live. And I know that's not going to be a great sign for the PGA Tour. Not that I want that to happen. I want us to come together. But I think it's in a place where something has to get done. Mm -hmm. It's just for the good of the game. But I, I do know that there is a backup plan. And that backup plan is is really good for Liv. Yeah. And I'm excited to be on this side. And I couldn't be more proud of what Liv has done Uh for us players and then for the world of golf. Yeah. You know, people in the United States, I can see how frustrated they are. I under, I, I do get a little bit of the frustrations, but man, it has impacted so many junior people, junior golfers and, and just juniors in general around the world mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and economies around the world. 
in a really cool, positive way. And I wish that y'all could see that. Mm -hmm. um, just a kid running up to me with a crusher's hat on makes me feel some kind of special. Yeah. Uh, it, is, it is so cool that to see a, a kid with a thing. hat that you're part of that, that they're running up because they care about the well, team. Well, you're building really something cool. bigger than yourself now. Yeah. I, yeah. I want the crushers to be, to last forever, way past me. Yeah. Like create that brand of hitting it long and dominating and having that sort of presence around um, all the time at these events. That, that's what I want to create, you know? Yeah. No, absolutely. And so you've talked to me a little bit about that kind of stuff, but what is the, like, what are the biggest things that Liv is doing different that you've noticed? Because obviously you have part of a team, you have part of a brand now, yeah. which is yeah, way crazier huge, than anything huge. you've ever experienced, yeah. obviously. Yeah. What about the team? The team it's a lot aspect? of work, by the way. I'm sure it's it not easy. It's I've more got a business. general manager. It's more yeah. business. We have a lot of board. We have board meetings. We've got, what about yeah. the team aspect and the individual aspect? How different was that? And was that an easy transition for you? Yeah. It's like playing college golf all over again. Yeah. I loved it. It was the mm -hmm. greatest thing. It was, it was awesome. That's, That's first an easy thing I answer. Of. Yeah. That's an easy answer. And so your team is Charles Howe, Charles Howe, Paul Casey, and Honor Bon Lahiri. They were all yeah. on the pack, by the way. Really? Player advisory committee of the PGA Tour. Yeah, no at some way. point. Mm -hmm. So they wow. know. They know a little bit. <laughs> they know a thing or two. <laughs> they huh? a thing or two. They They've seen a thing, a thing or two. two. We, yeah. we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two, right? Anything else you want to talk about with Liv, PGA Man. Tour, or are we going to be done there? Oh, I can I can go for a long time. <laughs> all I know. Anything that I missed, I guess. Man, all, all I know is, well, first off, you got to go experience it. Mm -hmm. you got to see it. I will. Um. We're coming out with a schedule here soon. It's been tough, man. It's it's not easy getting. We've been blocked at every corner in the states. I can tell you. Really? That. Yeah. The international, we already have all scheduled. It's all all done. Courses, even just like. Yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. Well, like it's, not it's, be, it's because it's because we're getting we're getting pretty much blackballed. Yeah. Oh, if you do this, then you're never going to host a USGA event. Or you're never going to have a host a USGA sectional or a PJ Tour Monday qualifier or it, it's all that it's more and it's like frustrating that they're pulling that card on us. It's so like, they're telling courses, you can't be a venue. Absolutely. They are. And, and they're if almost like holding venue, it over and yeah, they're dangling of, it. Absolutely. They're kind of like, and I know well, that maybe personally. you'll have a PGA tour qualifier at your course, yes. but you but if never you do have something a with live, then you never X, X and X. Wow. Yeah. It's like, come on guys. I mean, it's anti-competitive, but it's a whole other concern. It's a whole other thing. Yeah, that's that's um, that's crazy. It's wrong. It's wrong. And and at some point, just, let's play fair in the sandbox. Come on. Yeah. You know. And and the that's and the guy on, on our side is trying to play as fair as he possibly can, but it uh, it was stalling our business from ever doing anything until we had the the loss. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. a little petty, in my opinion. All I can tell you. Sorry, I just got opinionated. I, <laughs> you know, I got to chill good. out for you're a second. Good. You're, good. you're good. You're good. <laughs> you're good. I will say that in the end, when this is all said and done. Let's say five years out from now, Live is going to exist. Live is going to be a dominant force. I don't know what the landscape will look like or if it will even be called Live. But I can tell you that it will, it will be here. Team Golf will be here to stay. And I know, I know in my heart that the team aspect will continue to permeate through the game of golf for as long as I'm alive. Mm -hmm. I personally think. Yeah. That's my opinion. I could be wrong. But from everything that I feel, the sentiment, um, the movement, the way things are headed, I th I do believe that Liv will be here to stay. It may not be in the, in the same format, maybe something a little different, uh, maybe integrated in the tour. It may be offset to it. It may be just in different series, it may, but it's going to exist in some format. Can you see a world where PGA Tour and live coexist happily and are happily married together. Oh yeah, a thousand percent. Well, they're working on it now. Yeah, yeah, and it's going to be a difficult road because there's a lot of people with a lot of agendas. Yeah, it's so political. It's, huh? it's it is, and it's very disappointing. Yeah, it's disappointing because something should have been done a long time ago. It should have been it should have been over three or four years ago. Yeah, and it would have been unbelievable for the game of golf. I mean, they're talking about putting three billion dollars into the GDP of the game of golf, the global GDP of the game of golf. Yeah. What other company and opportunity are you going to have to do that? Are you kidding me? And, yeah. and it's, that's the frustrating part for me 
is why wouldn't you want that for the game? Instead of the drama, just let's love each other. Let's yeah, do it for the it, game of golf, you and, know, at the end of the and day. And let's figure out a way to make it work, make it mutually beneficial for both That's sides. Absolutely. Come on, yeah. let's go through the nitty gritty. Legacy, this, that, that, that. There's a way to integrate legacy. How about this? How about you have these live events be in the elevated series events, right? The new mm. s- schedule that the tour has brought out. Yeah. The live events be on top of them. Yeah. So essentially, you have the individual component to it, and you have the team component alongside it. Why yeah. couldn't you have that at a Riviera? Why couldn't you have that? You can. At, you, you can absolutely have that. Mm-hmm. You know, these heritage events, make them team events as well. Everything, everything continues to progress in, in this life. And how cool would it be to go to one of those heritage golf courses and go, dang, we're able to root for a team now. That's it's, super. That, yeah. To me, that'd be cool. Who even has the control? Because a lot of this just feels like ego. Like at the end of the day, a lot of this feels like ego. It's 99.9% ego. Yeah, and that's where I'm just like, who's got this? Who's pulling this chain? You don't have to tell me. I'm just, in my head, I'm just like... Oh, you, it you, you, can, assume, so you can assume who's pulling the strings. Yeah, you right. can Everybody out there, if you just think about it a little bit, the voices, the voices in the room, you could assume who's pulling the strings. You have... One guy on the left, which is H.E., mm-hmm. and then you have, you know, the other side, yeah. which has some pretty adamant voices, uh, and it's, it's, it's two or three people on that side making yeah. the decisions. Liv, PGA Tour, are we done with this com- <laughs> that yeah, part of the conversation? I, I'll, I'll say this. To finish Let's it off, it up. To, fin- to finish it off, I know that, that Liv and the PGA Tour, at some capacity, are going to somehow coexist, and I know it's going to be for the good of the game. It's going to take some time, but I know for professionals... Uh, the audience, it's all going to be awesome. Mm-hmm. The next 10 years of golf are going to be super interesting. And there's going to be a lot of business opportunities moving forward in the future for people to see, view. I mean, even if it's if we're talking about TGL, like there's that. You can watch that as well, mm-hmm. right? There's so many things that are going to happen. It's going to be very dynamic. I don't know what the full future looks like, but I do know it's in a positive direction. Good. There's enough people behind with enough capital to 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 influence the game in a really cool direction. It definitely feels better now it than it did. Yeah. And it will initially. continue to be be better. There may be some hiccups and some bumps along the way. It's the way it always works in life. That's good. But it's going to be positive. Okay. So wrapping the podcast up, I do have a couple more questions. <laughs> okay. Um, not about live PJ tour and stuff like that, but well, I guess this could relate to it. What's like the biggest challenge you've been through? Cause I also want you to talk mm-hmm. a little bit about, um, junior golf and how any any guy watching this you know because a lot of our audience is younger yeah i guess some challenges that you've been through and also some advice you would give to the younger generation of golf that's wanting to become a professional golfer be in your shoes looks up to you and says hey one day like that i want that to be me what would you say to them right now to any junior golfer it's pretty simple every day you're going to wake up Every day you're going to go to the golf course. You're going to practice. You're going to hit golf balls. You're going to putt. You're going to chip. Play three or four holes. Play Maybe play nine holes. Mm-hmm. And continue to do that day in and day out. Day in and day out. Dedication. Persistence. Are the most important things you can possibly have when trying to be a good golfer, mm-hmm. trying to be one of the best players in the world, trying to get on tour, trying to get in college, trying to win a tournament, play a lot of junior events, be dedicated, practice every day, get 1% better. I know it's cliche. Um, I had this, uh, this saying, Ben Hogan, it defined my life. Every day that you're not practicing is another day somebody's getting better than you. Mm. And mm-hmm. it just stuck with me forever. It's a Ben Hogan quote. Mm-hmm. And I'll leave it at that for the junior golfers that want to know how to get better. You got to dig it out of the dirt. You got to go grind. You got to go figure it out. You got to work. You doing the trick shots. How many times does it take you to finish off a trick shot? Long time sometimes. Long time, right? Yeah. And there are going to be times where it's super low. There's going to be a lot of times where it's super high. Yeah. And you got you to ride it effectively. You got to ride it. It's, it's, it's going to be bumpy. It's like the waves in the ocean. Yeah. Just try and move with it. You know, yeah, and, yeah. and enjoy the time you, you got. The right. the most important part is having fun through the journey. Yeah. 
And that's where every day waking up, going to the golf course, sunrise, sunset, whatever it is for you, getting out there, getting 1% better is literally the only thing you have to do to be as good as you possibly can be. What's better, the journey or the destination? Or are, oh, you, al- the- are you always on a journey though? You know what I'm saying? Because like you've had a lot of wow moments, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Which by the way, when you have a wow moment, like you've pretty much made it, like you're set financially for life, your family's set. Where do you get your motivation from now? You always desensitize when you reach that next level. It's good. I've done the craziest things in the game of golf one eight times and one one twelve times now worldwide. Right. And you start to desensitize off of that for after a while. Like winning in Chicago, yeah, it was fun. I was like, all right, on to the next. We didn't even talk about the fifty eight, by the way. I know. <laughs> like, we didn't even talk about <laughs> we, it. Yeah. Like there's so much I feel like we didn't <laughs> we, talk about. We, we could absolutely talk about that too. But I will say, to finish that little statement piece off, you, you desensitize to those wins and those highs and lows. And it's actually sometimes a pretty scary place. That's why the most important thing in regards to having that continual positive feedback to keep you going down that road, to push you down that lane, is the journey. Every day has to matter. And you Mm got to succeed just a little bit, just a little bit every single day. It's it's that little, it's the little, you know, piece of cheese that that mouse is chasing every single day. Just, just, I'm just going to get a little bit today, a little bit more. And if you continue to do that, you'll never be starving. You'll always, you always, you always be thirsty, but you won't be starving. Yeah. You always be moving. You want forward. more. You always want more. But when you get everything, you become that that fat mouse, and you're just gonna sit on your butt and do nothing. That's what I was wondering, because like you, essentially, your life changed in a couple of days. Obviously, you would experience your life changing from winning so much and doing yeah. so well on the PGA Tour. But yeah. then like. Whoa. Yeah. yeah your no. life really it, changed. It really changed, but guess what? My dedication got even more. Yeah. Greatest thing that I was ever told, Jason Day. He told me this at the RBC Canadian Open in the hospitality, food, beverage, dining area. And I was pondering, this is like my first year on tour, made a good, a decent amount of money. I'm like, I always had this Scion XB my brother uh, had, it was his, one of his cars and he gave it to me. It was my first car ever. And I drove it through college. I was still driving the Scion XB. I'm like, I want a new car. I want want something new. And I I was like pondering. It was like, it was expensive Tesla, right? It was in Tesla. And I always wanted one. It was a cool, super futuristic. And I said to Jason, like, I just don't know if I can, if I can get get it. If am I being frugal with it? What am I doing with my money? I don't know what, what, what's going on. What, What should I do? And he's like, Bryson, just know, if you buy this car, this, this should make you more passionate about wanting to do better. Because you're leveling up in life with this, with this purchase, right? Mm-hmm. You better show that you not only can, can afford it, but are justifying you the purchase. It. You deserve it, right? right? You've worked hard, for sure. You, you can say you deserve it. That's, that's fine. What it should be is, is something that motivates you to do better. Mm-hmm. When you get to that level... That should push you to work even harder than what you're doing now. Yeah. And That's that very true. completely changed my mindset with that. I mean, yeah. overnight, I went from, man, I don't know what to do. Am I not? No. Now, guess what? I barely have any money in cash mm-hmm. in my bank. It's all invested everywhere. Why? Because that money can do good for others, yeah. for everybody else. Employ people, help take care of people. Influence an economy in a positive way, pay taxes on it. Then I, you know, get to see a benefit of from the roads and everything, yeah. all the infrastructure. Right? It's about doing the next thing. Mm-hmm. That's the most. Pa- that's that's why I'm so passionate about it. Is because I see the good works that that all that can do from it. So when you are getting a purchase, when you are buying something uh, that you think, Man, I don't know, that should help you level up in life. Yeah. Not take away from what you have. Make sure it makes sense. Obviously, mm-hmm. be careful. But that, that purchase, what, whatever you're getting, the new house, the, the new uh, golf club the, that you're going to practice at, always find a reason why that means something to you and how that's going to impact your life in a positive way. Mm-hmm. And then say, now I got to level up more. This is yeah. pushing me to, this is driving me to be better. 
Because think about it. If you, get a, if you get a new tailor-made driver or whatever, right? Don't think that that's going to be your full answer. Like, oh, I got it now. There's no problem. No, you got to work hard still to get better and continue to keep leveling up. And that driver is now allowing you to level up, but you got to keep working at it. Mm-hmm. My point being is that Jason Day changed my, my perspective on life because he said it's a blessing. You get that as a blessing, and that should push you to work harder for the right reasons. Yeah. Not for the wrong reasons. That's, it's, that's very true. Um, a couple of things. Uh, right after the live deal deal happens, obviously a lot of financial gain, but more than that, I think probably a lot of responsibility for you. Yeah. I and mean, and that has to right. be a big motivation too, because now you have a, a whole essentially, I mean, tour relying on you yep. to, you know, be a good face for it and promote yep. it. Right. You got it. So it, that has to be a big motivation for you as well. It's, it's almost like responsibility, purpose. There's a reason why I'm sense. doing YouTube content. I mean, and doing things outside of the game of golf. Um, with that amount of capital comes a lot of responsibility. You, you hit the nail on the head. Mm-hmm. And if I was to just sit on it, you know how sick I would feel? Terrible. I mean, I wouldn't be able to live life. <laughs> that was the Not case. Not at all. So, yes, a lot of responsibility comes from it, but it's a good responsibility. That's what I'm if, saying. If I feel it, like that's a good motivation. It's a motivator, and it allows me to have more passion about life. Yeah. Right. So, what's yeah. the love life like? Do you got a girlfriend in no. your life? Searching? Nah, it's uh, it's golf. My my love is golf right now. There you go. Married <laughs> to the game. Always married to the game, first Spec. and foremost, especially with. You know, it, it's the most important decision you can ever make in your life, right? Is the love of your life, right? Yeah. And you got to be, you got to be careful. There's, there's a lot of fakes out there. Is that, um, is that also something that maybe is in the back of your mind too? Is like with a lot of the added things that you've had happen yeah. in your life, is it kind of like you're very careful now? I'm over very who you careful. Trust kind of thing. Very. I mean, I can't afford to make the wrong decision. Yeah. It's just fair. not only from a financial perspective, from a mentality perspective, like, like from a mental health perspective. Yeah. You, 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 you can't mess up. Yeah. And if you do, it takes a long time to recover. It's not easy. Finding the right partner in life is obviously very important. Yep. You know, and, they and, need to add to your life. And here's the deal. Yep. It's got to be mutually, mutually beneficial. Yeah. Like both sides have to realize, and it's not always going to be perfect, but if you find someone that can go through the, the thick and thin, yeah. That's that's the one you hold close, that's right? One. That's yeah. the one. That's and fair. I'd rather be alone for the rest of my life than be with the wrong person. Yeah, cuz then you would feel alone. That was a, that was a that was you a quote it. right there. That hit a little deep. What about the house? Last thing I'm going to talk about cuz I just done. <laughs> yeah, I just well I hear that every single every time. Every single time. <laughs> Uh, you started this house before the live deal. Yeah, this, this was, was in something that you had planned. And I, for a long time. Before you talk on it, I've been to it, guys. It's the craziest thing. I've, <laughs> and my brain can't even comprehend it. So whenever that's done and you release content in that house, mind-blowing. It really yeah, is mind-blowing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's some the, great content over there. There's yeah, a, lot of, a lot of amazing Even his gym, like his gym is absurd, but you have apparently the biggest TV in any house or yeah. home in the world, it's, apparently. Again, like I said about that Tesla, right? All this stuff is just making me more, more passionate about what I can do for, yeah. for everybody else. As much as it's a place where I can establish my home base and take care of stuff, I've built an office in there for 10 people to work mm-hmm. above the garage. Yeah, that's true. So it's it. not like I'm doing this all just for myself. It's for others and the businesses I'm associated with to help create a positive economic impact. Right. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be paying a lot of property taxes in the house. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Definitely. It's insane. Well, good for uh, the city of Grapevine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anything else you want to touch on? Or? 58 was really cool. 58 was really cool. You want to talk about it a little bit Just, before we we'll, we'll, close we'll it we'll out? We'll give them a little hit. We'll Let, give them a little hit. Let's talk about it. Um, well, what do you want to know first? And so, uh, the thing that I've asked you multiple times that I'll ask you again is one, you talk about like you get into the flow state, things just start happening. You're like, yep. you don't even realize it. It's exactly And then right, you get the on way. the 18th hole, and mm-hmm. then what? You know? Yeah, and I shot 61 the day before, so I was playing Crazy. good. And obviously, you shoot 61. It's not like you're gonna 
usually come back playing that well the next day because a lot of it was luck to have that happen. Mm-hmm. But I played 60, I, I shot 61 and it was pretty much the worst score I could have shot. And that was, was that, that was the difference. I was like, wow. Yeah. If I play the same way and I get a couple things to go my way, I could shoot in the 50s. I didn't really think that was going to happen. It's teeing up on the last day. But I drove it right down the middle on one, hit a wedge to six feet. I made a tough sliding six-footer. And I got on the next hole, hit a perfect drive down the left-hand side, hit it up to about seven feet, make the putt for birdie, and I'm two under through two, and I'm like, uh-oh, here mm-hmm. we go. Third hole, hit it to 15 feet past the hole, miss it, and I'm like, ah, okay, here we go. Just, yeah. you know, hit it down the fairway on four, hit it to about four feet, make it. I'm like, all right, whatever. Or right, whatever, um, three under through four. Yep. Hit, Something a, light. hit a four iron down the middle, and then... Uh, or six iron down the middle, and then hit a wedge over the green in the bunker. Oh, God. At this point, I'm like, all right, you know, whatever. It's not going to be a it's big shocked. deal. I hold it out. Really? I made it from the back bunker. Yeah, I was a chip. That I haven't watched in. a shot for shot, so oh, this my is gosh. cool. Yeah. I'm picturing it all. Yeah. I, I hold it out from the back bunker. It was a pretty Four simple five. shot. Four yeah. through five. I pipe, pipe a drive down the next hole, six, hit it up there to about 17 feet, make a curling 17, or no, no, it was a 12 footer. Make a curling, tw- it broke left to right, curling 12 footer. Five hundred through hole. six. Yeah. Holy and shit. And Greg Norman's on the back. And I didn't even know that. I just looked at him and he was just like, <laughs> he was like, uh oh. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> and I was, at this point, I wasn't nervous anymore. I knew I had commanding lead. I knew I had control. But there was still Mito was playing well. Uh, or was it Sebastian Munoz? It was Sebastian Munoz. It was, was, was coming from behind and mm-hmm. Matthew Wolf was there and uh, David was there. So it was still pretty, it was only a couple shots and it wasn't guaranteed, but it still was feeling really good. Mm-hmm. Pipe it on seven, hit it up there to six feet, make it. I'm six under through seven. Jeez. Then Bro, number, you could have shot like 18 under. Yeah, yeah. Well, then That's number crazy. eight happens. I hit uh, eight iron or six iron. I block it right, goes in the bunker, hit it to eight feet, miss the putt, make bogey. Yeah. Crazy you shoot 58 with a bogey, by the make, way. Make bogey. Yeah. Okay. Five under through eight, though, yes. still. Yep. Crazy. At this point, I'm like, all right. Obviously, I'm, I'm this is done, probably. Yeah. Because like, for the 58, right? That's what I'm thinking. I was just kind of thinking in the back of my mind, all right, well, maybe bogey is probably not, but I, sh- I got to get it back. So my mindset, 60s. I just flipped it. I went, okay, I'm just going to make birdie in the next hole. Come on, let's go. Hit a five wood down there. The wedge up there, 12 feet, make it. Drive it up by the green on 10. Chip it up, make a 10-footer. Seven 11, under through 10. 11, pull it into the left trees. Have this difficult little bump and run shot. I punch it through the trees. Unbelievable punch shot. Rolls it up on the other green about 12 feet. I hit it and I lip the left edge out. Just barely. Or the, I don't know. I lipped it out just barely. Yeah. And I was like, oh, come yeah. on. You know, that would have been amazing. Yeah. I pulled the drive on 12 because Obi's right. I hit a six iron up there. Two putt. Almost missed a little three footer, but two putted. 14, no, 13, hit five wood, perfect, super nervous, water left, OB right, I pipe a five wood down there, super nervous, difficult, tight little hole, and I pushed it right, had about a 60 footer, I lagged it up there to like nothing. I'm like, okay, right. cool. At this point, I'm not thinking of 59, I'm just trying to win the golf tournament. What are you at? Sorry, do you know? I lost track. Eight under? Give me maybe? one sec. Seven or eight? Uh, I was six under through seven. Five under through eight, seven through six ten. under through nine, seven under through, through ten, seven under through eleven, eight under through twelve, eight under through thirteen, fourteen, hit a five wood out, hit a wedge on the green, kind of caught a flyer a little bit, jumped past, left the 20 footer short in the heart, eight under through fifteen. So then eight iron, I had an eight iron from like two ten. Uh-huh. And Matthew Wolf hit his uh Shot right of the flag, chipped it up there, missed a seven footer. I make the seven footer, hit it close. I just stuffed it, yeah, twirled it the whole thing. Insane at, at seven feet, make it nine under. Yep, pipe it on 16, chip it up there to nine feet. Starts dumping rain, by the way, at this point. Hmm. Make a nine footer, 10 under, 10 under, right? So now I'm at 60. Didn't mm-hmm. even know I made the putt because it was so it was raining and I didn't know what was going on. Jibo, we we're just going back and forth. I just made it. I'm like, all right, cool. I know I'm gonna win the tournament now, yeah. whatever. Didn't even think, I was, and I was just so laser locked, I didn't even know what I was relative wow. to a 59. Didn't even know. Hit driver into the left rough on purpose. OB is right, or water's right, and then OB right of that, but made sure I missed it left. Hit a five wood up there. 
just short it right at the bunker, chipped it up to about 11 feet, and I hit this putt in the practice round. And I knew what it did. It was a perfect little right center putt. Didn't break much. And I hit it, just boom, trickled on the left-hand side, went right in. And at this point, I, and it was for, for 11 under, right? right? And I knew over the putt it was 11 under, <laughs> but I was so in the zone. Again, the zone is like where there's a bubble and you don't even feel like anything's affecting you. Like right. the rain was hitting the bubble and falling off of the bubble. You had a force field around you. Yeah, you were really, in some that's Star what, Wars shit. Kind of. Like that's yeah. what it kind of felt like. The force was with Just, you. Just, you know, Anakin Skywalker here, yeah. you know. <laughs> Crazy. Luke, actually. I like Luke better, but that's yeah. fine. Uh, whatever. Yeah. So anyway... Felt like I had a force field around me. Nothing was affecting me. And I made it. And Jibo was just like, <laughs> he's just laughing like a goofball. Like, nice putt, dude. <laughs> yeah. 59 coming soon. There we go. And, and, but he didn't even know what I was at. Oh, that's hilarious. He had no idea. That's great. So he asked Greg Norman. He's like, what's Bryson at? Is he, is he like 11? All we know is he's winning. <laughs> and he thought he needed, that I needed to make birdie in the last hole to shoot 59. And Greg was like, no, he's at 11 under. He's at 59 right now if he pars. And G was like, <gasps> I was on the tee box. I knew where I was, but I didn't think much of it. And it was so wet on the tee box because it was dumping rain that I, I just didn't want to chunk it. I just didn't want to chunk it. That's the yeah. only thing I didn't want to do. And so I caught it a couple grooves low, and that's why it came up short. Yeah. That's why I hit on the mound and came up short. Feet. But again, I, I had, was amped up to the whole thing. So kind of like, you know, um, cancel each other out. Yeah. Hit short, came back, and I had a 40 footer that was up over a ridge and curled to the right. It effectively played like a 40 footer because it was up the hill. And whatnot. Yeah. It's like 36 feet, play four more feet. And I remember talking to myself and saying, just get it up there, man. Just get it around the hole. No, just no, get it up. no fun, no funny business. Just no, get it up. come on. You know how to do this. Yeah. And Jibo and I went through the whole thing. We said, okay, oh, it's 40 feet. And I was like, oh, it's about three feet out to the left. I see that. It feels about right. And he was like, all right, 40 footer. And I was like, yep, 40 footer. And in my head, I just said, all right, you've done this every day yeah. for your whole entire life. You've hit a 40-footer. You've practiced a 40-footer. Every day you walk, walk out of the practice screen, just hit a 40-footer. Mm -hmm. And that force field, it was like, whoom. And I just went back and through. Dink. 40-footer. I looked up, <laughs> pulled my hand down. I'm like, oh, this, is, this is absolutely perfect. And like three quarters of the way, my eyes just widen. You can see yeah. them widen. I'm like that. I just, and... I'm like, this is dragging, this is dragging. Yeah. For 58, yeah. this is for 58. And I just, just went nuts. Went absolutely nuts. It was crazy. Damn. It was crazy. Damn. And then as I walked over to Jibo, he's like, who are you? <laughs> Damn. And that was Jibo's first win in like seven years, by the way. How many did you win by? Six. Something like that. Six, seven. I don't know. It was a lot. That's crazy, but dude. It was crazy. Yeah. David could have shot 60. <laughs> And still would have lost. That's insane. Yeah. So that's insane. 119 on the weekend, 119 shots. It's better than some. Yeah, the 61 58 is round. insane. That's the crazy yeah, part. To this think 59 about. and a half was the scoring average. There's never yeah. been a weekend where there's 59 and a half. People forget about the 61 because of the 58 being that's so crazy. Right. But dude, yeah. that's the crazier part. Yeah. Yeah. The 59.5 is insane. 59.5 scoring average on a weekend. That's crazy. It's like Tiger Woods, PGA Tour 2K, whatever. You know, yeah, you're playing games, a video right? game. You're, video game. <laughs> you're on EA Sports. That's right. Spinning the ball with the, yeah. yeah. I was pressing X so hard. You yeah, know? you were. <laughs> you really were. That's insane. Wow, wow, wow. That's well, fun. That's about it. That's about what it. What else you want to know? I mean, I think we've covered most of the topics. I appreciate you coming on the podcast, dude. Yeah, I mean, seriously, this thank place you. is pretty sick, by the way. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That's a cool setup you guys yeah, got it's, here. It's cool. It's finally finished. So yeah, we had a simulator thing. That was that was fun. Yeah, and I wanted to finish off a chip shot with you. Yeah, do some trick shot in here. We have to do it sometime. Yeah, I'm down be fun. at be some cool. point. Be cool, but thanks, yeah. bro. Appreciate you having me on, man. Yeah, that was absolutely. awesome. Yeah, let's do that again. again. Uh, all right. Yep. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Thanks, bro. Yeah, of course. Appreciate that. Absolutely. As well, always. guys, there you have it. Bryson DeChambeau, good, good podcast. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And if you did, stay tuned for more. If you want to follow Bryson's socials, they're linked in the description down below. Uh, again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. And until next time, peace. Christmas, December 25th is coming very soon. If you want to get your family or any loved ones, anything from goodgoodgolf.com for Christmas and have it under their tree Christmas morning, it's not too late. If you order by 1220, 
and choose expedited shipping. It will get there to you in time to give it to your family or loved ones as a Christmas gift. Goodgoodgolf.com. Order by 1220 with expedited shipping. It'll get to you. Merry Christmas.